My brothers and sisters in the Lord, in many ways today is a strange day. February the 14th, the day we celebrate St. Valentine's Day and the day this year that we also celebrate Ash Wednesday as we begin this holy and penitential season of Lent. And when these two dates collide on the calendar, my brothers and sisters, oftentimes it leads to an internal conflict within us. Because at first glance, it can seem that these two days have very different themes and very different meanings. Certainly, my brothers and sisters, Valentine's Day, as the world defines it today, is a day of romantic love. Opulent dinner delicious chocolates, beautiful flowers, cartons of perfume, and mushy poetry. <laughs> Roses are red, violets are blue, sugar is sweet, but not as sweet as you. But Ash Wednesday, my brothers and sisters, is a day of fasting and prayer. It is a day, my brothers and sisters, of almsgiving and mortification. It is also a day of dire warning as we hear in our first reading from the prophet Joel, rend your hearts and not your garments and return to the Lord, or in the, or in the imposition of ashes, when we hear the words, repent and believe in the gospel, or remember you are dust, and unto dust you shall return. At this life, my brothers and sisters here on earth, has a very definite end as we pray for the great gift of eternal life. But what I want to say to you, my brothers and sisters, is that these two days are not as different as they may first seem. It's not like two different dates as in two different 18-wheelers colliding head-on, but they fit together, my dear friends, more like a hand in a glove. Because this is what I want to say to you. Ash Wednesday is to God what Valentine's Day is is to lovers. Ash Wednesday is to God what Valentine's Day is to lovers. Whether we're talking about a husband and a wife in the sacrament of marriage, or we're talking about individuals who are engaged or who are in courtship, but there are very similar themes between these two days, and they're very intricately related. Think about this, my dear friends, for those who are, who are married, or those who have been in the sacrament of marriage and maybe your spouse has passed on or maybe you're engaged or you're uh, dating or whatever it is, but certainly, my brothers and sisters, on Valentine's Day, one of the things that we are looking at in the true sense of love is how do we increase that affection towards our spouse? How do we increase that affection, that care, that passion that exists? And three things that we can think about, my brothers and sisters, that's very important in the sacrament of marriage is this. One of the first things is communication. You've got to be able to communicate. If spouses do not communicate, it doesn't end very well. You have to be willing to share the depths of your heart, your joys and your sorrows, your trials and your tribulations, your hopes and your dreams. And you have to also be able to listen to what the other person has to say. You can't do all the talking. And so that is just so important when it comes to that relationship, that you have good communication and that you also have active listening to the other. We also see when we're talking about this increasing in affection, not only the importance of communication, but we also see the importance of self-sacrifice, that the husband is willing to sacrifice for his wife, and the wife is willing to sacrifice for her husband, and in turn sacrifice for their children and grandchildren, for their family. And those sacrifices are very important because it is at the basis of married life. It is at the basis of married love. Do we, are we willing to be self-sacrificial for one another? You know, when the wife says that I would like to go to the ballet, and the husband says, you know, I will skip watching the football game and go to the ballet. That may be a sacrifice. And certainly, my dear friends, it may be sacrifices even more demanding than that. When one spouse has to care for another spouse who is ill or infirmed 
or even on their deathbed. Communication, self-sacrifice. And the third thing, my brothers and sisters, is this. Little and spontaneous acts of love and thoughtfulness. Spontaneous acts of love and thoughtfulness for your spouse, whether it be a kind word, a hug, a kiss, a gesture, whether it be, my brothers and sisters, a little note that says, I love you, those little acts of kindness and love. And in being able to do that, my friends, it's also those acts of being able to forgive one another. Pope Francis says this, for a beautiful marriage, you need two things, excuse me, you need three things, or three words to describe it. Please, thank you, and I'm sorry. You see, my dear friends, those all come in those little acts of love and thoughtfulness. And so if that is really the true meaning of St. Valentine's Day, then my brothers and sisters, I think we can see a direct correlation as we begin this holy season of Lent and also celebrate today Ash Wednesday. Because Ash Wednesday, my brothers and sisters, is to God what Valentine's Day is to lovers. And so on Ash Wednesday, my brothers and sisters, we're entering into the desert with Jesus these 40 days and these 40 nights in order to what? Increase our love for the Lord. Increase our passion for God. Increase our affection for the Lord Jesus. And the church gives us the three hallmarks of Lent. Prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. The three things that we heard in the gospel today. And we can see those three things, my dear friends, mirrored in with just what we just talked about when we talked about Valentine's Day. Prayer. What is prayer? Prayer is communication. Prayer is being able to communicate with God, to be able to tell God what is in the deepest parts of your heart, your joys and your dreams and your struggles and your trials and your temptations, to be able to give all of that to the Lord Jesus. But prayer is also about sacred silence, being able to discern and to listen to God's will. My grandmother always used to say, remember when you pray, always take some time to shut up and be quiet. Because we have to listen to what God has to say to us so that we can be all that God calls us to be. And so we have prayer, fasting. Fasting, my brothers and sisters, is self-sacrifice. In fasting, we are giving up things in order to mortify our bodies, to separate ourselves from the world in order so that we can be closer to Jesus, so we can grow in virtue and we can root up vice. And whether that is giving up small things or large things, whether we are fasting from meat today and on Fridays, all of those things are made, my brothers and sisters, as small sacrifices because of our love for God to unite us closer to Him each day. And when we give them up, hopefully we're growing in virtue. I remember a few years ago, you know, when you always see Father Cooper, you see him with his black Yeti. And so a few years ago, I gave up coffee for Lent. And so after the 40 days and 40 nights and the Easter Vigil and Easter Sunday, the next day we were in the office, the staff said to me, Father, could you do us a favor? And I said, sure. Could you never give up coffee for Lent again? <laughs> it was more of a penance for us than it was for you. <laughs> but those are the acts of fasting, self-sacrifice, giving up. That's so important as we enter into this Lenten season. So we have prayer, we have fasting, and we have almsgiving. Those are the little acts of love and thoughtfulness and kindness that we do for others, especially those who are in need. What does Jesus say in the gospel? Whatever you do for the least of my brothers, you do for me. And so how we give, my brothers and sisters, of ourselves, of our time and our talent and our treasure, that is our almsgiving. It is those little acts of love and sacrifice, those little acts of thoughtfulness in order to continue to build the kingdom of God. My dear friends, on this Ash Wednesday, as we begin this holy and penitential season of Lent, let us remember that Ash Wednesday is to God what Valentine's Day is to lovers. 
Some of you may be familiar with the story about the old comedian Jack Benny. Jack Benny walked into a flower shop one day and he said to the florist, you know when I die, I want my wife to receive one single pristine red rose every single day of her life. And so he's married to a woman named Mary for 46 or 47 years when he passed away. And he left a little part, a clause in his will that said that as long as Mary was alive, every single day she was going to receive one red rose. And every day the florist delivered one red rose to her house until she passed away. My brothers and sisters, today as we begin Ash Wednesday, God wants to deliver to us a red rose. He wants to deliver to us a red rose every single day of our life, but it's not a flower he wants to deliver, it is the cross. He wants to deliver to us, my brothers and sisters, the cross, because what does it say in John's Gospel? God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten Son so that we may not perish, but so that we may have eternal life. There is our red rose. There is our love that God has for us. And as we come forward to be marked with the ashes, a sign of repentance, a sign of our own renewal, we are marked with the sign of the cross. We are marked with the sign of God's love. You see, my brothers and sisters, in being marked with the sign of the cross, we're also marked with the heart of Jesus for each and every one of us. Ash Wednesday is to God what Valentine's Day is to lovers. My dear friends, when you receive the sign of the cross, it is a call to repentance, it is a call to conversion, it is a call to new life, and it is a very beautiful reminder that God is sending each of us the red rose of his love.